So good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I hope all of you are doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's good. So I can see we we stopped at. Uh, uh, others last time we looked at the I have other and the full other. So today I would want us to go straight to the other sections. And um, there is a though that subtractor is more similar to the other, so I might not give it a lot of time. Most probably, I just just go through it, then you realize that um, much of what we have with it is actually the same as the other. Both the other and also the other, uh, the other they will actually be similar. Um, like if you look at that subtractor that we have there, what are we talking about? Uh, what are projected on the screen? Now we are getting uh, the screen, we are okay. So maybe before I start, I need to ensure that everything is okay with all the numbers. Including my my voice, if it's coming out clear. So Ian, you're getting us here. Yeah, yeah, getting you clear. Yeah. That's okay then, <clears throat> and I hope your week has been okay. I've been quite fine. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, have you done any exam online, uh, a mock exam online? No. For this course? No, sir. No, not no. mine, not mine. No. Even with the other lecture, no, I have not given you a mock exam. No, no, sir. No. no, no. We are done. No. We are supposed to do hours today. Huh? <laughs> no, week? sir. No. What? It's next week. What? It's next week. <laughs> My friends, you will <laughs> a mock exam, which is not credit. 
<laughs> so please don't get scared with exams like that much. Uh, things are just in control. Don't worry so much. Eh? So I need to make sure that I I actually uh, talk to you so that you get used to some of these things. Eh? Uh, let's not take it to be very difficult. And I think it would have been good. I think we forgot. We should have done one today. Uh, that way, uh, most probably by next week, you have been okay. In fact, we should have done two of them. Uh, most probably, we can even organize for the same two mock uh, pieces. Just, just mock pieces to enable you to understand how we use the, uh, or how we can do an exam online. So we can prepare that as maybe uh, towards the end of the lesson. <clears throat> so about subtractor, we need to know that uh, this device which um, uh, basically subtracts binary numbers. And um, there are two types of these subtractors given by the half subtractor and the full subtractor. So please note that the half subtractor, when you look at it, it has two inputs and two outputs. The inputs are AB, then the outputs, the outputs are given by the difference and also the uh, bore out. So somebody's mic is on. I think it's making a bit of noise anyway. I think he has put it off. She has put it off. Cynthia, Cynthia, you can put off your mic. Or maybe I can mute you like this. Eugene, your hand is up. Are you asking a question? So there are two outputs, as we have two inputs. And uh, the two outputs I was indicating, we are talking about the difference and the bore out. Uh, then this is just the same as what we had for the half uh, adder, not so much of difference. And um, actually, we just uh, replace the difference with the uh, we, do, we replace the, uh, the sum with the difference and uh, the carry out with the bore out. Then if you look at the truth table, we basically have A, B, two inputs, and uh, D, the difference and the bore out as the two outputs. Uh, in which case, uh, remember we did subtraction at some point, and we had seen that zero minus zero is zero, you borrow a zero, then zero minus one, we had actually seen that it was one for one, and uh, one minus zero is equals to one for zero, and one minus one is zero for zero. And if you look at that truth table, compare it with the one of the up adder, you realize that the difference and the sum are basically the same. Because even the sum here, we had zero, one, one, zero, and that was implemented using A bar B or A B bar, which I explained last time how it comes about. Uh, then the bore out is the only uh, is the only one which becomes a bit different because the one moves from one one to zero one, and in that case, then it means your bore out will be given by. Uh, it's not written anywhere here. So I need to. I can write it for you. So bore out. Uh, is equals to a bar uh, b um, and uh, you realize that the the half adder was given by a and b so if you look at the diagram also we just uh, introduce an inverter to a and uh, we change the difference or we change the, the sum to the difference then they carry out to the more uh, so uh, if we go back to the adder and we we'll would see what we had for the half adder, you can actually see that the sum is yeah, the same. 
we have used the XOR gate. Uh, the carry out we used an AND gate, but there is no inverter here. But with the half subtractor, we have an inverter. If you can see it appearing there clearly, actually the A is inverted to be able to implement that. Eh? Uh, so I will indicate that this is basically not so much different from what we had in the uh, the half adder. For the full subtractor similar, uh, three inputs, two outputs. And that's what we also had for the full adder. A, B, then the borrow I, that's the borrow in. The difference and the borrow out remains the same. Uh, in this case, we're having three inputs and two outputs. Uh, please note that uh, we are just subtracting zero minus zero minus zero. You get zero borrow zero. Zero minus zero minus one, that should be one borrow one. Because zero minus zero is zero, and zero minus one is one borrow one. So we have done it earlier. And then zero minus one already is one borrow one. Um, then the one that you have minus zero is one. So it remains one borrow one. Uh, zero minus one is one borrow one. But then the one that you get as a difference, subtract one, you'll get zero. That's why we have zero for one. Uh, then when you come down one minus zero, minus zero will be one or zero, then one minus zero is one, one minus one is zero, you borrow nothing. Uh, the same result here for one, one, zero. Uh, one minus one is zero, then zero minus zero will actually be zero. So one minus one is zero, zero minus one is one or one. And that's what we, we get for our true table uh, given by uh, the difference and the borrow out. Uh, if you look at the difference and the sum, they are also the same. Uh, because we had 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 1. If you look at it, you will see that that's what we have. Eh? Uh, then if you look at the borrow out, the only difference is that you are going to have A inverted, which means you are going to pass the A through the inverter for the two cases where we have it being used. Eh? to get the borrow out. Uh, but if you look at what we had for the full adder, it was AB, um, then we had AC, then we had uh, BC. Uh, because you realize that BI is replaced by, I mean CI is replaced by BI uh, for the full adder. So if you go back and compare, please look at this. D is A exclusive or B, exclusive or bi which is equivalent to a exclusive or b exclusive or uh, ci that's what we had for the uh, full adder and i can remember we did a lot of work last time on the same so if you go and compare with that also you realize that the uh, full adder is given by S is equals to A exclusive or B exclusive or C in. The carry out is equals to B uh, C in or A C in or A B. And uh, you can actually see that we are replacing C in with B in uh, in the borrow out, uh, in the borrow out and uh, also inverting A. So if you were to change this diagram to a full subtractor, what do you think we need to change here? Assume we just want to modify this circuit, the way it is appearing, to become a full subtractor. What do we need to do? Somebody who can uh, uh, give a hint on what is supposed to be done. Who can try? Could you repeat the question, sir? The question is, I want you to compare 
Uh, this is what we have done in the full subtractor and indicate how we can implement. What changes can we make to this diagram to become a full subtractor? <laughs> I do not get to Where? A. Yeah, please know that we I do not get to A. That's correct. We introduce an object to this point somewhere here, and everything else remains the same. Then we change this to borrow out. We also change as to what? D. We change S to D, and we also change C into. In. So we also change uh, it to the core in. Let me try to make those changes here. Uh, just now. So we introduce an inverter in A, so we can put it somewhere here. That's our inverter. And then we change uh, this to borrow in. We change this to borrow out. We also change this to a different And uh, please note that that makes the, all the changes. We have, uh, you can even take an image of the same, no problem. So that's basically what you need to know about the full uh, subtractor and also the half subtractor, not so much. Quite similar to what we had last time for the others. Any question? <clears throat> So I'll move on to the next section. Please know that the programs will also be similar. You only need to do a small, maybe slight uh, change to the program. And uh, when you're also talking about the circuit maker implementation, uh, you can be able to see what you have done in terms of those changes. They can actually be introduced. So the next concept I want us to have a look at is the Multiplexer. That's our next circuit. And uh, from what we can see there, uh, a, sub, uh, a multiplexer is a device which is able to uh, direct very many inputs to a single output, the way you are seeing here, uh, based on some select lines. And uh, please note that those select lines are also based on a formula. There is a formula we have here of n is equal to 2 to power m, where n are the number of inputs you have, uh, m are the select lines that you have here. Uh, so if you take an example, like now I have two inputs and one output, how many select lines do you expect me to have here?
you have two inputs and one output. How many select lines do you expect? One. Yeah, that's correct. How did you get it? This is the headline. Because we have, because we have only one output. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to select only between the three. Mm, that might not be the correct explanation. The correct one is, please know that we have two inputs. And for you to get the two inputs based on this formula, uh, you need to put a value here at M because M is our select line. Eh? And uh, which value do we put here to get a two here? What value should be M so that we can be able to get two N? As in N is one. It's one because it just one. Say two, to power one. two to power one is equals to two. One. So the next other question will be if I have uh, two select lines here, how many inputs do you expect me to have? Yeah, there will be four. Uh, please note that you take two here, two to power two. That should give us uh, four. And uh, if you can, someone actually you can. It can even be drawn, so I can I can draw it for you. How it's supposed to appear. So you have uh, four inputs. And uh, two select inputs. How many outputs? One. Yeah, we have just one output. That's correct. Always, when you're dealing with a multiplexer, you need to know that you deal with just one output. So these select lines, you can give them value. Right now, maybe I put their text. Uh, this will be my I1. Or if we start with I0. Then the next one is I1. Then the next one is I2. Then the last one is I3. And our select line is given by uh, S0, no, we start with S1. And the other one will be S0. So our output is basically F. And here we get basically a four or two one. 
Uh, usually we call it uh, the mock in short. That's the diagram we expect. Uh, we are talking about four inputs and uh, one output with uh, two select lines. Uh, there's something I need to mention about a multiplexer. Uh, the other name we give it is actually a selector because it basically selects the input or it will select one of the inputs according to the output you have, according to the select lines that you have. So please know that like for this one we have one select line, that's a two, one and that select line we can call it S. That select line we can call it S. Uh, just note when that select line is uh, zero, it picks that value, goes to the output. Otherwise, when S is one, this I1 is picked to go to the output. Take note of that. So for the first one, S here is zero. And the second one, S here is one. That is the importance of the select line. And I hope you are getting that. When S is zero, I zero is selected. When S is one, I one is selected. You go to the output. Uh, who can explain the way this one works? The four to one. I've done the explanation for a two to one. Can somebody be able to give us an explanation to the four to one uh, multiplex? Uh, based on what I've done, or what I've given a few days. Anybody who can try to explain in a similar way that I've done for uh, this one here. Yeah? Could you repeat? your first explanation please um i said uh, in fact it's even written here also but uh, if s although this time i've used a zero but no problem we just assume it's s if it is zero then this switch is moved up and connect to i0 then the i0 uh, finds its way all the way to the output f in that case I say that when s is zero then f is equal to i0. Uh, when s is 1, i1 is connected to go to the output f. In the, in the second one, since there are two s's, can we say when s1 is 0, i0 is collected, and when s1 is 1, i1 is connected? Uh -huh. Or will both of them be collected if S1 is 0 and then, or 1, then S0 is 1, then I2 and I3. I don't think of that. Oh. Yeah, you using uh -huh. two combinations. Please know that the two, S1 and S0 are combined together. They, they are not separate. You have to give a combination. Yeah. So, 
So please know that the explanation is given here that when S1 is zero and uh, S0 is zero, which input will be selected? I zero. I zero will be selected. That's very correct. So if you move down, what do you put there? C zero. We put zero. Then we put one. Which one will be selected? I one. I one. I one. That's correct. Then what do you put next? One. 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 Zero. 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 I two. I two is correct. And lastly, what do we have? One one. One one. one. Yes. I three. I three. That's correct. Uh, and please know that this is your head. Uh, if you are to explain uh, using the actual diagram, then when this is zero, zero, uh, the switch connects from here down to the output. So uh, we, we just put a line which runs from here to the output. When S1 is zero and uh, S0 is zero. So for S1 is zero and uh, S0 is one, I1 is selected to go to the output. For S1 is one, S0 is zero, I2 is selected. And lastly, for uh, S1 is one and uh, S0 is one, uh, then I3 is selected to go to the output. That's how it works, uh, based on that diagram. Uh, please note that that's what you call a selector. And uh, that's how we select it. That's one of the most important devices which we have in the computer. Uh, what do you think it will be doing inside the computer? And one of the most important devices. Application. Yes, one of the applications of a multiplexer in the computer. Multiplication. Mm -mm. Multiplication will be done by the, the other circuits. You guys just not select. Select is what I've used the word which is very common. Um, it is one of the devices that will be selecting anything that has to be selected in the computer. Now, let's take an example. If a process wants to use memory, uh, you realize that memory is a limited resource and uh, will require to be used by many devices or many processes. So this device has to select one of the devices or one of the processes to actually use memory. So if we have a memory location here, like this, assume that this is our memory location. Please know that if we have all these devices coming in, they have to be selected from here through the multiplexer and they appear there. So one of them will be selected. Uh, like now I can select process I0, to come and use the memory that I have here, depending on the select lines. These select lines are what we call conditions. There will be some conditions which will be dictating which kind of uh, process you can pick or which kind of uh, uh, device you can pick which would want to use this memory. So that's one of the applications. Another one is still selecting memory locations. It can be used to select memory locations to give us data which will be going into the processor for processing. Uh, it can also be able to select processes to be able to use the buses in the computer. 
it is the one which selects one of the inputs. You have many, many inputs which are using the uh, processor. Please note that the keyboard is there, a mouse is there. One of them has to be selected to be using the computer at a time. Unless you have two cores or more, that's when you might not require this device or still you require it. So that indicates which one goes to which processor. Yeah, but then it's required. If it's one processor you are dealing with, then the keyboard has to use that processor and it has to be selected first of all, if it has to use it. The mouse, the same. Uh, then we didn't mention much about the ALU or what, what, what the function of the, A, the, not the ALU, but the ADA in the computer. What would be the function? The functions of the ALU in the, I mean, of the ADA in the computer. Perform addition and multiplication. Uh, please know that it will be used to perform, to be used to perform the ADA. The, addition and multiplication. Yeah, what do you call those operations? Arithmetic, arithmetic operations. operations yeah so it does arithmetic but it also does uh, logic operations i am not sure whether we have talked about on how you can change um addition to be all the logic operations we haven't done that but at least we have done on how you can change uh multiplication to addition add and shift how you can perform uh subtraction by adding because you use the complement then you add how you can perform division say do you need to uh, shift complement and add but at some point we'll be talking about maybe i can be able to give you an explanation now you can perform uh, logic operations uh, from the adder uh, please note that we have designed up there is the one which will be used to perform all those operations. You don't require to design another circuit. Just modify it slightly, and it can be able to perform for you all those operations. So where do you expect to find the ALU in the computer? In which, in which section of the computer do you expect to find the ALU? CPU. The processor. Yeah, we have it in the processor, that's correct. Uh, where do you expect to have a multiplexer in the computer? Control units. Multiplexer can be in the control unit. I think that's also correct. Um, so please, our time now is getting up. We have less than one minute. So I would want you to, I'll give you an exercise. Write for me the pseudo code for implementing the two to one multiplexer. Do for me the pseudo code and also the port one multiplexer. Please do that. Eh? Then joining back, we join through the same link. After how long? 